This is Scott Freck, Executive Director of the Eugene Symphony. In an interview recorded at public radio station KLCC in downtown Eugene, I had a chance to talk with conductor Miguel Harth Bedoya, who is music director of the Eugene Symphony from 1996 to 2002. He returns to Eugene this month to conduct the orchestra again for the first time since his departure to help us celebrate the symphony's 50th anniversary. I asked Miguel to catch us all up on what he's been doing since he left 13 years ago. Well, since I left Eugene, probably the most notorious thing is that my family has grown you know, from one child to three. Mm. So, and we have a teenager already, and a 10-year-old, and an almost a 9-year-old. So that's the biggest, uh, and we have acquired a dog now in the last uh, six years. So those are major, you know, daily developments. Then professionally, my tenure here at the Fort Worth Symphony has um, surpassed 15 seasons now, very successful ones, I have to say, very happy very still committed and with lots of projects happening, including uh, two recordings for Harmonia Mundi, uh, for international release, and also a tour to Europe in Spain at the end of this season. And also my recent appointment as chief conductor of the Norwegian Radio Orchestra would be the most um, important one in the last couple of years. I'm actually starting my third season already, actually next week. <laughs> So, Miguel, looking back on your experience as music director here in Eugene, what does that time in your career, what does that mean to you? What lessons did you take from Eugene to Fort Worth and beyond? Well, the Eugene Symphony Orchestra was my first professional appointment as music director um, in this country. And I, I learned from you know, making music, learning repertoire, connecting with an audience, developing that relationship, which is, you know, crucial. I mean, more and more, but I mean, it was always crucial, but now it's, it's even much more important. Uh, also, you always learn how to, how to treat an orchestra, you know, how, how the musicians need to be um, encouraged, challenged at the same time. And that's something that can't be learned in theory or by thinking about it. You know, just people are people and everybody has a talent that brings to the table. And that's an on, ongoing you know, learning process that will go forever because every orchestra is made out of people that happen to play instruments and play them very well. But ultimately, it's about you know, uh, human relationships. So what are you looking forward to in returning to Eugene in October? Well, various things. Uh, first of all, reuniting with, with a former orchestra. I'm, I'm sure, you know, like all the orchestras, there are always slight changes, adjustments, improvements, people leave, people come, people move, etc., etc. So that's a normal process of an orchestra. But just reuniting with a group that I have so many fond memories of, of all the various you know, projects. Also, it'll be the first time that I'll conduct in the refurbished Hall Center, because even though I initiated the campaign, I never, I, I never performed in it. So that'll be a, a nice uh, sort of a test to, to the work. Well, right, the, uh, the new yeah. shell that got added after you left, just after you left, as I recall. Yes, absolutely. And, and again, you know, um, bringing back music to share with, with people, with our audiences and with our orchestra, I mean, that's, that's still the biggest pleasure. So let's talk a little bit about your program and what you're going to be bringing to Eugene in October. Of course, during your time here, Miguel, amongst many other things, including your, uh, your Mahler cycle, you introduced, uh, of course, the dance evenings with tango and flamenco, you also introduced this audience to the music of South America, about which you have a particular passion. Mm -hmm. So you're bringing four different South American works, two by Alberto Ginastera. Tell us what we're going to hear on, during your concert. Well, Alberto Ginastera will, you know, would have been 100 years next year. And, and I thought a composer that has become such an icon of, uh, of Latin America altogether, with living music styles aside, I thought it deserves to, you know, to be recognized and maybe relaunched because there are so many works of Ginastera that are not just in the common repertoire. So of Ginastera, we'll be hearing his piano concerto number one, and we have a soloist, Vadim Holodenko, which is the last um, gold medalist of the Van Cliburn International Piano Competition. That was a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. And then after that, we will have Ginastera's ballet Estancia in its complete version. Yeah, most of the time you hear just the famous dances like the Malambo uh, or the other three companions to, to it. And in this case, you know, when I look ba back, at pretty much no one had you know, revived this piece. I thought it was a very uh, a nice way to celebrate his legacy. Mm. So uh, Hector Saraspe, who was 
the choreographer that produced the projects you mentioned in El Tango and the Flamenco will be collaborating with us again on, on this one. And he actually produced it for Ginastera himself back at Lincoln Center. Really? Yes. Yes. You know, decades ago, of course. And so I thought he would be the, the perfect person to, to bring back to life this, this production. And it also has not been... If you look for it, you, you don't find, a, for instance, a good video production of it or testimony of this. It pretty much has been gone. Mm. And I think that this will be a great opportunity also for the Eugene Symphony to step up in the, in the world map. Yeah, absolutely. To, to, to create another sort of step in the legacy of music making in the world. I'm, I'm completely sure about this because already people know that I'm doing this you know, in Eugene, and already the eyes will be focused there and curious to see how this will turn out, which I'm sure will be successful. But, you know, that's, that's how it goes. These ideas go beyond the concert hall in which we play them. So hearing the complete ballet, um, I mean, I think there's an interesting symmetry here, I, I think, and my, please correct me if I'm wrong, for your very first concert as music director in 1996, you performed the four dances that you just mentioned. Yes. Uh, from Estancia. So it's a nice bit of symmetry to do the entire thing with right. your Right, I your hadn't return. thought of that, actually. <laughs> yeah, it's a, nice, it's a nice little bit of bookend thing. So with, yeah. with the music that we don't normally hear in the complete ballet, there's thrilling music, there's absolutely gorgeous music. Can you tell us what's going on in the plot that's, that's driving uh, the music? Yes and no, because the plot, is, the, is, is, is in principle, is a gaucho, a countryman in, in the pampas of Argentina, you know, that, that comes into the city, and there is this encounter of worlds, you know, from the province to the capital, and at the same time, there can be a, a, a what do you call a love story level to it. However, because this is an original choreography, in most cases of a ballet, the plot as such is not literal because there are no words. However, we do have words in this case of a excerpt from a poem and, and a baritone singing. But the actual plot, I don't know, because the choreographer will have to bring this to us in his vision. So I don't think it's really too relevant, uh, you know, in comparison to when we talk about Swan Lake or, or Cinderella or Sleeping Beauty that, that have, you know, specific, you know, characters and it's a storytelling uh, ballet. That's not the case in Ginastera, which lands between, if you think of Martha Graham's dance company and when Copeland wrote, the, there's a, a big... Um, area where things can happen or might happen or you might imagine what happens because the music it was it's what uh, triggers things and the music of this ballet lies between the folk music of Argentina and the new music I suppose I mean this is in the 40s you know what the new music would have been then uh, plus the simplicity of a tune so that's the best at this point because we are working on it that's the best I can describe how the supposed plot will be Conductor Miguel Harth Bedoya talking about Argentinian composer Alberto Ginastera's ballet Estancia, which headlines his performance with the Eugene Symphony on Thursday, October 15th at the Holt Center. A former music director of the orchestra, Harth Bedoya returns to Eugene as part of the Eugene Symphony's 50th anniversary celebration. More information can be found at eugenesymphony.org. This interview was recorded at public radio station KLCC in downtown Eugene. I'm Scott Freck, executive director of the Eugene Symphony. And thanks for listening.